Today, we're going to break down one of the early 2000s most popular black cinema loves. Just might be regular, right? Yeah. Because the positives of it are that you are not indicting a woman because of her sexual choices in a way that you wouldn't indict a man. Yeah. That is positive, right? The issue is, should anybody be a hoe? Yeah, because... <laughs> You know, back in those days, a lot was brought up concerning your health and their health. And that's kind of what Monica was talking about. Then I guess you stick your thing in anything. Right. <laughs> but then I guess you'll stick your thing in anything. Because for the people who are around this age in Gen X, we're, we're at the situation where you had HIV and AIDS, right? That yeah. were out there, that was out there and, and very much a death sentence if you were to catch it. And at no that prep time. and whatever yeah. the other thing. I just seen a commercial had prep and something else that didn't have an R maybe. I forgot. The no, pep, post. post. Pep and, the, yeah, one was post hmm. and one was pre. So they, maybe they prep. both was prep. Yeah. yeah so, so you got all of these of other. The same way it is now. You got all of these other things that are just indicators of the time right as to why the characters would feel like they feel because the reality then is different than the reality now now you know you there are treatments there are preventative measures all kind of stuff back yeah, then especially around 91 92 93 it would seem like a bunch of celebrity or high profile hiv diagnosis and aids deaths were in the news right you know, so. so that informed how people thought about these things. Very true. So, yeah, so they're fighting in the car and going back and forth and everything. And then he decides to get back at her like Quincy always does. And he's like, that's why you ain't getting recruited. That's why you ain't getting recruited. Who said I'm not getting recruited? Your hot ass temper, that's who. Because you emotional. And then she brings up this thing again. And I guess it's better defining what's being labeled as emotionality, which is that her passion for the game is misinterpreted as inappropriate because of her gender. I'm a female. I get told to calm down and act like a lady. I'm a ball player. Versus when a guy does it, which is literally the same thing that we heard Angel Reese say more recently in 2024. So apparently not all that much has changed about the perception of female athletes in this almost yeah, quarter century later. But the difference is that they're now high, more um, high profile now that True. that is why it's talked about, because we see and hear about the women playing basketball more or just women's sports in general. And I mean, I really I enjoy watching some of the college um, women's college basketball games. It was, yeah. And I, at the time that this is coming out, we're entering the uh, Sweet 16. Well, at the time we're recording this. So, yeah. So th they're having their, uh, you know, little argument. But then I think we are also going to get more insight into what their home life is like, you know, years later. Quincy comes home and his mama has discovered an earring in, in his bed and she confronts him about it. Shut what up. is this? That's your, that's your These fast girls looking to get you caught, Quincy. <laughs> <laughs> Why does she talk like that? Ma, what you doing in my room? Quincy, I have told you about these fast ass girls. Uh, because she knows they, they trying to get their meat hooks in. Back then they would have called them yeah. gold diggers. Wow, we, we were just studying. Boy, I'm not playing with you. Now, I'm telling you, these girls are looking to get you caught. Yeah, and then she's, he's just like, yeah, I know. You told me. I hear you and all that. And They see you and they see dollar signs. I know. Are you hearing me? I'm hearing you. Then he's like, so where's your uh, your father? You know, oh, he just, he said he'll be here later. Later when? I don't know. He said he had a meeting or something. When? Well, he just, where did he go? He said he had a meeting. <laughs> Anyway, I got to get to this meeting. So tell your mama a little bit late. She said at 1 o'clock in the still morning. still having meetings, bro. <laughs> Middle of the night meetings. And then. At 1 o'clock in the morning. And then we have the confrontation between the mama and the daddy. The yes. Parents. Hey, look. I'm not getting anywhere. Like punching a clock just so my wife doesn't get mad at you. The mama is like, I came second to the NBA. I'm definitely not coming second to this BS sh scouting, scouting job. Bro. I came second to the NBA. I'm not about to come second in no bullshit scouting job. So, yeah, he's he's retired now and now he's doing scouting. And then she's telling him, like, do something about your son because these tramps are coming after him. You should see the tramps coming after Quincy. If you don't talk to him. I have. Then she talks about, hey, you know, I thought you said maybe you would be going back to get your degree. You know, you said that you would think about going back and getting your degree. And he was like, nah, uh, you said that. Look, 
You said I should get my degree. I like my BS job. So now we get a little insight into why he wants his son to get the degree. I like my bullshit job, okay? And it's going to lead to a front office position. Because what he knows is that the NBA career could be cut short. Yeah. And he does he doesn't want all of his eggs in one basket. And presumably he left college for the NBA. So he didn't finish, right? He got drafted and and left. And so now here he is, you know, years later and he's holding the bag and he can't make as much money as he could have perhaps. But what I want to know is why if you got fame, well, I guess he wasn't superstar famous, right? And he played for the And he, <laughs> and he played for the, the worst Clippers. teams, you know, at the time. Because I'm just like, well, why if you're an expert in this area can't you get a better job? You know. Yeah. Well, I guess, I think the scouting job is probably good. I don't know. So that's something that I do not know about. So maybe y'all could go to the comments and let me know yeah. what it's like. Uh, what type of scouting he could have done for colleges, or I don't know who's he scouting for, and why it would be a BS scouting job, and maybe it just pays less. I think it just pays less, and probably everything paid less. Yeah. Than what but he, he was, was getting talking in the about NBA. maybe getting a front office position from this to yeah. move up. Yeah. So and he's like, but don't worry about it. We got just enough savings to keep you in Gucci and gold and whatever Gucci else. And right. Gold. We got just enough savings to keep your fine ass in Gucci and gold. You know, because so so here we also get a subtle implication that perhaps the mother was in it for money. You know, she snagged him. Like, is, did she trap the father? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Because she came and rep misrepresented herself. Oh, yeah, I'm a cook. I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I do all this. Then you get knocked up by him because you see his promise and you think you're about to have a paycheck, which she did. But it also came with some other things that she didn't prefer. But the other argument could be made that maybe she fell in love with him and, you know, and she wasn't trying to get her meat hooks into him just because of the money he could have made or did make. Right. So this is go to the comments also and let us know. Do you think that Quincy's mother trapped Quincy's father? And by trapped, I mean, preg got per pregnant on purpose early on so that they could be a family and have a baby. Wow. And she could get paid. That would be very crazy if she that wanted to become but, a basketball but, wife. But you know, the way you put that together, it does seem exactly as what it is. And it's different when it's your child. Right. Where it's like now your child could be the target of someone like you. Oh. Well, OK, so like this here, here, hear me out here. This is like, you know what they're doing because yeah, you did it. Exactly. Right. This is the same as the father who looks and is like, I'm a player and I played a lot of women. And now he has a daughter and he's like that dude. So in the next scene, we see that Monica is with her sister, Regina Hall. And Regina Hall is braiding her hair as the character Lena. And so she asked her, hey, you know, you got a date for the dance and stuff because her sister's in college and she's still in high school. You are. Uh Got a date yet? So she's like, well, don't worry. I found you someone. I found you someone. Found? A fine college guy. He's in college? And he is fine, girl. This to a high school girl would be like, oh, man, I have a college guy taking me to the dance. Like, that is a social elevator for uh -huh. sure. And he's a fine college guy. <laughs> like, yeah, that that would but, be some social capital at the high school. Yeah. She asked her about the spring dance and Monica's just like, yeah, brothers are lined up in my locker, jokingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brothers are lined up at my locker. How come ain't no guy asked her to spring dance? Is it her temper, her attitude? Like, I don't know. I don't know either. Because it just seems weird to me. So like, would that have been accurate? If you well, were an athlete as in high school that like something like basketball, you know, did you did got, you know, what was it like? Did huh. do you have an issue with guys asking you yeah. out? Did so maybe it's back to the tomboy uh, conversation, because I don't know if being a tomboy would make boys not ask, but maybe it is like as if. Is equivalent to like being a stud, maybe possibly, you know what I'm saying? Or looked at the same way. I mean, maybe. And, and maybe just question her sexuality. So then they won't ask her. You know, I don't know. That and, could be a whole movie. In itself, I know. Though, and and, and, and I'm, I'm kind of getting to the outskirts of my, you know, like what I would personally know and understand. But yeah. what I would say is I think back then that if people thought, um, if guys thought that you um, were a lesbian, then they might not be trying to push up on you the same way. Yeah. Whereas today, I feel like if they think that you're a lesbian, yeah. 
that but may not two, really affect well this is in la so you. i don't know but like in 2000 did people just think that people were lesbians because i don't think people were yes out. i think they thought that they were yeah but i don't think out. yeah they weren't out like, but yeah but i'm saying i think the assumption is that no one was right you know what i'm saying because no one was out and you suggest that you may be like, yeah, I think this person is, but that ain't going to just basically make it a fact. Right. I think dudes would still try because then there was no notion that this is an actual lifestyle and things that people lived out and weren't attracted or women who were lesbians weren't attracted to men or boys. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's just. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a it's a difficult kind of, you know. Yeah. Thing that kind of even imagine how it was then versus now, because I'm making sure that I'm remembering. But I do remember. So I'll give you some specific memories. Um, and, you know, again, I, I am Gen X. So I'll give you the idea that I remember pe hearing people make comments about girls softball teams and this assumption that the girls on the softball team. Oh, were, yeah. Were um, lesbians. Um, and then I think when the WNBA got started, which would have been some point after this, like you had the women who you know, were clearly straight or seemed to be straight who were even possibly like more girly girls who were, you know, fierce athletes. But then you also had other women who, you know, were um, LGBTQ. And so, you know, I, I don't think that that was necessarily judged. It might have been a little after this, so it wasn't the same kind yeah, of but impact. I think the WNBA was before. Being possibly a lesbian in this movie or any other movie, or in life even, I, I just think that the eyes just weren't on the women the same way. And I know that we do have um, commenters who are, um, you know, from the LBGTQ community. And I would love to hear your comments yeah. on how you feel about this, because I think, I, you know, I weigh your yeah. opinion on this a lot more than mine or heights on this subject. But I, I would say that I think... I feel like the spotlight wasn't on the women the same as it was on men who, um, you know, who were gay or bisexual. Right. Which is why I think that boys would have still asked her. Yeah. So I don't know <laughs> if that was. And, and, and let us also know whether you think it was true to life like that. Nobody would ask Monica to the dance. Is it also because she was sort of antisocial because she seemed to be very focused only on the basketball? We don't see that she has any friends other than. Testosterone Quincy. don't care. You know. So it would have to be her denying them. But from the question and the answer, it seems like no one asked. Right. You know, and then she's uh, just like, oh, uh, well, I told the guy, the college guy, you were fine. You basically you look like me. How'd you give him a say yes? I told him you look like me. And then Monica's like, I look like you. <sighs> Great. Monica, you do. Yeah, right. The sister is clearly a girly girl, just like the mother. And obviously, you know, Regina Hall is beautiful. You just worry about playing your heart out for that recruiter tonight. You let your big sister worry about your date. And so she's saying to her younger sister, you do look like me. If you, you know, if you do your hair, which the mother and the sister constantly say, if you just do your hair. Yeah, he's like, damn. And then he go over there. You don't look half bad. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh. And the, another thing that happened with her date or whatever, he's like, can I take your coat? And then she's like, uh, yeah, are you cold? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I can check it for you. <laughs> That's the, so foolish. But while Quincy's up there, he comes up and he's like, what's up, Black? What's up, Black? Shut up. <laughs> I think that was a, qu a colorist quote joke, right? Was it? Because, uh, I didn't miss yeah, that. Yeah, because that's what I got over you, right? You dark skinned. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Um, and you trying to talk to the girl who I'm here with, who I think looks good. And think about this. Oh, because he did say yeah. your sister wasn't lying. So he he's like validating that an independent opinion, opinion of her <laughs> looks is saying she she looked fine. You yeah. know, she's good looking, right? Yeah, but with the black thing too, before somebody says it, yes, we do call people black sometimes and it's not necessarily negative or colorist. But I want to get back to that too, because okay, when you think about, okay, think about the time when this movie is made in 2000 um, and he, he uh, Omar Epps, the actor playing him, it, it has been, you know, famous for a few years, you know, because I feel like, you know, mid 90s or whatever or early, early 90s, because that what year was uh, Juice? Juice was 91. 91. So, yeah. So he's been famous for like the whole 90s. But at this point, just coming out of this 
period of time, like the, as they would say in our culture, the light skins were in, right? For the guys. So you had all of these actors and, you know, you had colorism that was coming into play at that time. Musicians, you know, I mean, I just think back to the 80s and you had like the Albie Shures and, the, you know, all of that. So the a lot of the heartthrobs were these, you know, curly hair, wavy hair type of dudes yeah. with light skin. And so and this was 88, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> It, which could inform Albie Shore, year of Albie Shore, <laughs> right? Which, which could inform w- the commentary on him saying, "What's up, black?" Right now, maybe it's something totally different, but I, I hear you on that. I, that was a great, yeah. Observation. It's like kind of like you know, I got to knock you down a peg, you know. Mm-hmm. So when he sees that this is going on, his date comes back uh, over, and Gabrielle Union's character like, "Hey, girl, I ain't no Nike made dresses." So like, you see, she looks good, and now you got to insult her. Damn, girl, I didn't know Nike made dresses. The guy you're there with left you to come talk to her. Mm, yeah. And so she just looks and she kind of shrugs it off and she walks away. Yeah, but then Nike started making dresses later on. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those Jersey dresses? Oh yeah, <laughs> from back in the I don't know that was in the two thousands, right? Yeah, I remember the nineties. They had the skirts. I don't know if you call them tennis skirts necessarily. But oh yeah, people yeah, were wearing those. They made Nike skirts. I don't remember the sisters being as fine as you though. They sit down, Monica and Jason, and Jason is being a creepy little predator. <laughs> so tell me what I have to do to make you have a good time with me. I know. He like, tell me what I got to do to make you have a good time with me. I don't remember the girls being as fine as you when I was that young. And she's clearly uncomfortable by his like weird (laughs) and creepy behavior. The sister set this up, though. (laughs) She didn't know he was like this. She did not know. It's a man, ain't he? Any college age? Well, and so you setting up your sister. to, but, But maybe she's like, Monica don't like dudes like that anyway. Like, in other words, she's not distracted by fine guys. Not that she thinks that she's, um you know, lesbian or anything, yeah. but just, you know, but she's might focused only trying, on that. He might be trying to get it, though, with a little pressure on it. I think that's what that was, right? What I got to do yeah. what, to make you have a good time with me. He really the same as Quincy. Yeah, but I don't. Trying to get it. We didn't see Quincy be that upfront, though. We seen no girls do it. Quincy ain't like what I got to do to get in there. Well, that's basically what I don't he know. said. Maybe he got that college game. Maybe that college game is it's more he direct. Makes a, nah, I don't they know. just ain't show us what Quincy do. But this guy, he definitely like, yeah, tell me what I got to do. You give me the information I need to convince you to <laughs> let me smash. I know, right? Foolishness. <laughs> and he's like, don't leave a glass slipper behind and, you know, Jed or whatever. Right. Well, I'm going to get you this that's drink. That's definitely what she should have done. Mm-hmm. Leave. If he's talking like that and you feel uncomfortable, time to go. Or at least go stand by Quincy and ruin his night. (laughs) The DJ put on one of the best love songs of the 80s, I Want to Be Your Man by Zapp and Roger. Charlie Wilson tells a good story about how this song came to be, and basically he wrote it. Mm Mm-hmm. Quincy is looking into Monica's eyes while the song is playing. Basically saying he want to be her man now that she is dressed up a certain way and looks a certain way. Yeah, you met my minimal standards now, you know. (laughs) He's making a big bedroom at her. What a terrible love story. He just is making like these big bedroom eyes at her across the uh, dance floor while she's dancing with Jason. He's rubbing up on the other lady. Rubbing the other chick, but they both looking at each other. I'm like, "Mm, mm, mm-mm-mm. But see... The other thing I never realized before until kind of what we were just talking about, where Quincy wasn't really as assertive as Jason was. Quincy had the girls coming to him because of who he was. Right. He was the star. So the girls would flock to him and he could just flirt back. But he didn't really have to work hard for any girls. Yeah. And he didn't have to do anything. If if we go back to before they hit the dance floor, every single time that Jason walks away, here come Quincy. Uh, hey. hey. You having fun? <laughs> because he's like, oh, how you enjoying yourself at the dance? You know, he was looking for any. The DJ's fresh. <laughs> <laughs> DJ's fresh. Oh, who's this clown? <laughs> I, and at the time, I think they, they were playing um, Bobby Brown, My Prerogative, right? Here, Quincy is here. Then the slow song comes on and then they start to dance. He said, oh, so you did go to decide to come go to the dance with Shawnee, huh? And he was like, it was late. She asked, right? When you brought up earlier, leave the world behind or Queen of Slim. I think that got annoying for you after a while, too. But 
but hey. Yeah. It is so, what it is. So that's this movie, what love songs do. Yes. In this movie, they're slow dancing. So Monica comes home and her sister and her mama ain't waiting up for her. This is supposed to be like the biggest night of her life, you know. They done fell them. asleep waiting. Yeah. <laughs> they was like, this is the biggest night of your life. They done fell asleep. The mama's sleeping. So she don't want to go in there and wake up the mama. She goes in through her window. Right. And I think the reason she's avoiding it is because she knows they want to know every detail of your first night as a beautiful girl. And she probably like, I don't even want to hear that right now. Let me just go in my room. So she actually goes out and climbs in the window. In a dress. And then she basically sees a letter that her mama or somebody left by her bed. And then she sees Quincy and she goes, psst, psst. (laughs) Psst. To get his attention and he comes out, they both go outside. What? And, you know, they talk about how their nights went. A little after you left, I told Shawnee it was time to go. Drove her ass straight home. And Quincy lies about driving old girls straight home. Are you? He's lying. You think? But like, why do you think he's lying? Because it don't even make sense. She's like, I'm gonna do whatever you want to do. She kept her word and left you satisfied. <sighs> That's what you think, huh? And he's like, Nah, I just drove her straight home, and she didn't like it, and called me the dumbest nigga ever. Don't you? Uh- Don't you say that about Quincy. (laughs) After she told me I was the dumbest brother in the world, I took off. Quincy was so taken by her that he said, I don't even want that girl no more. I'm going to dedicate myself to try to get with Monica. I don't know. I mean, that was in in my my young mind. That's a better interpretation of what happened because he did see her and was looking her in the eyes. Yeah. Don't be... Talking about Quincy, just he went still smashed and then lied about it. <laughs> That's nasty. And then he didn't wipe himself up. <laughs> what movie was that that I was talking about? <laughs> oh, that was, was that uh, Tyler Perry's Mia movie? Culpa. Mia Culpa. <laughs> okay, if you didn't catch the Mia Culpa uh, review, <laughs> yeah, we talked about that, that nastiness. But you know what's, what's this leading up to. But <laughs> So then she basically like, hold on, and she go get the letter. And I don't know because I ain't, I wasn't an athlete like that. I played golf. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I played tennis. <laughs> they ain't sending no letter if it ain't no offer like this. So I don't understand this part. And they're trying to make it like, did she get in or not? And it's like, are they basically recruiting her or not? I don't know. But in this movie, it comes in the form of a letter. And then she's like, well, he's like, what you yeah. waiting for? Four. Can you? And she gives him the letter and he opens the letter and then he kind of fakes it, it a little offer, bit slow. Right? But it was an offer. They want you. It was yeah, the what offer. else would it be? You, did you apply and you're waiting on that determination? Yes, but. Like, it don't make sense. You know, so, but Somebody they had to figure out a way to explain com- it to us. Yeah, I know. Explain it in the comments to us. But they had to figure out a way to communicate, to cause this suspense and communicate this thing between the two of them so this whole letter thing does come like you said after they talk about their experiences on the date so he says that he told shawnee it was time to go home and he took her home and that's why he's home early and then uh the college guy jason took her to mulholland drive which i guess is where you would go and park and then you know be kissing and doing other stuff in the car which i go at mulholland drive figures and he was trying to get it, but she was just thinking about how many offensive rebounds that she had in the game. And she just couldn't remember, and this was bothering her. It was really bugging me because I couldn't remember how many offensive boards I had in the championship. So this is showing you how she just was not, he was not even on her radar. And she was like, man, kneeing him in the, in the nuts and everything, just trying to get him off of her. And finally, he brought her home. And so she's home now because of that. And so then, of course, you know, Quincy is all like, uh, for four offensive rebounds. That's how many you had. Bruh. What? Yeah, four offensive rebounds. So then at the end of the day, though, this still points to that they care about the same things. Yeah. They observe the same things. 
They just have the same code. They in basketball culture, basketball life. They like the same things. And, you know, it's going to be a lot easier to be dealing with somebody who you're on the same page with. Yeah. If you could be on the same page. Yeah. And then after this, it's like, okay, I think we should smash. <laughs> and so we did quarter one and quarter two. Quarter three and four will be in the next part, which will be out soon. Or maybe it might even be out right now if you're watching it at a later date. Man. So what do you think of the film so far? Like, where are we with this? I think it's better than I thought it was. Mm. But it's always like that when we actually get down into the nuts and bolts of what's going on. Yeah. You know, the way that they develop these characters and just have this wondering what's going to happen. Because it looks like, okay, movie over, right? Yeah. They done got together, bam. What else could it be? And when you're doing like stuff like this in acts, you know, you don't typically get that. Because the downfall would be too late because it's in quarters, right? Yeah. So we, I guess now we're halfway through. And, you know, to break it into four acts, I guess, is a little different. But the build up itself to this could have been an entire movie. Oh, yeah. And I mean, we've seen movies, none at the tip of my brain right now, but we've seen movies in the past, I know it, where the whole movie is the build up or are they going to get together? And then they finally do get together in the end. But then the other sort of model that they'll do is like more of what you see here. It takes a while, they get together and then something happens, dramatic. And then the question remains, are they going to get back and together? And they always do get back together. Well, they don't always. Well, well, I guess in maybe there was movies, a point maybe. of time. Yeah. Yeah. In movies, yeah. But like, that was the f the formula. Yeah. But know, now you got to have 8000 twists. So you never yeah. know how it's going. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah. So um, what do you think so far? So far, it really kind of made me reminisce a little bit on how I always felt about this movie. And it might be reentering my rotation of wanting to see a movie over and over again. Because no. I'm seeing <laughs> I'm seeing it in like a different light now. Yeah. You know, um, it makes me think about the music, right? Mm -hmm. Of the time where some stuff was just way better and the new Jack Swing era was just trash. <laughs> yeah. The new Jack Swing drums and stuff. And then that early 90s dance and kind of, I don't know what they would call it, with them stupid orchestral hits that were from the, uh, the Yamaha keyboard or whatever, man, yeah. that was just terrible. <laughs> you just got, just like in Just Got Paid. They yeah. have a lot boom, of them in boom, that song. Boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, that's how I feel about it. I feel like, I feel okay with everything that has happened to this point and the analysis that we've done of the characters, even the parts where early on Quincy was way more controlling as a child. But the question is, 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 has he continued that or was his not being controlling over her because she wasn't his girlfriend? He didn't feel this sense of ownership during the time that, you know, after yeah. their initial meeting and then when they were in high school. It still might come down to what his daddy taught him, right? Because hmm. his daddy is just like, this is, you know, he, he learned from his daddy's example and from what his daddy said. They may be conflicting or not, but... Clearly, he was trying to follow in his daddy's footsteps. And once you're my girl, this is how it goes, is how he put it as a child. And I don't know if that necessarily goes away just because you're an older child. Yeah, that's that's probably true. And what I hope to get into more in the next part will be kind of the dynamic between Monica's parents, you know, because we kind of saw the sort of the beginnings of the of the crumbling of Quincy's parents relationship. But what was the status of Monica's parents? So mm. these are questions we have to ask as well as to get back to our original question, which is, was this love healthy? And to think about it, we saw a lot of love. We saw the love between Quincy and Monica. We saw their friendship love. We saw their attempted romantic love. And now, you know, uh, it flourishing in their young, uh, young adulthood, if you will. And then we saw the love of the parents. We saw sibling love. Um, we saw all of that. And then we also saw the love of the game, the, ah. having the love of something that is the focal point of your life and how that impacts. And you. she almost lost both of them. Yeah. Bro. And look, she almost lost them and she got them right in the same moment. I got in and I got the man. You know, he's like, hey, I'm going to the same school because, see, they had to resolve the issue of, OK, we're seniors and now we may be going different places. So they solved that in the film by, oh, look, now we're both going to USC yeah. and playing basketball. Yeah. So if you made it this far into this nice, great breakdown, type fake and bake in the comments so we'll know you're one of the real ones who stick around. 
and be sure to check out the video that's on the screen right now.